it is time to finally bust my stash. Hi, my name is Matilda and welcome back to Miss Matty. I recently had to go through all my fabrics and yarns as I had discovered an infestation of carpet beetle and cloth moths. It is literally every sewist or knitter's ultimate nightmare. I think I have got it all under control now. Let's hope. Having an infestation like that and having to go through and clean everything really forced me to face my stash and evaluate what I own. I had to look at fabrics for projects I still wanted to happen, but I have not got around to do anything with. I had to look at fabrics and yarns for products that I had abandoned. And I also had to look on what mainly my fabric stash consists of, which is messy, not so inspiring scraps. And despite my stash initially not feeling very inspiring, all the individual fabrics and yarns did pass the spark joy test. A couple of years ago, I decided to go stash list and failed. And if you're curious to find out what all of that was about, I will link to those videos in the description box down below. At the moment, I do not aim to go stash less at all. I have since my failed stash less attempt realized the importance of having materials at hand for mending, for experimentation, or heck, even to sew or knit a garment. So when I was going through my stash, I realized that it's not necessarily the yarns or fabrics themselves that are uninspiring, but rather the context that I have around these pieces. Many times there are like leftovers from previous projects or reminders of the projects that never came to be. I also asked you in a community post how you felt about your stash. So this is how you felt about your stash. 20% of you said, love it, it's like a treasure chest. 5% said, excited to start building mine. And then 55% percent said enough to outlive me time to use it up and then 10 percent of you said it's a mess and not sparking joy yet tempted to shop more 10 percent of you answered other so clearly a lot of us have plenty of materials in our stash and it's i think a lot of us feel like it's time to use what we have rather than accumulate more. And after I made my 2024 creative goals video, if you haven't checked that video out, I will highly recommend you to do so after watching this video because a lot of what I'm talking about in this video is like a continued conversation on things I touched up on in that video. After I made my video, I've been thinking more and more about maybe doing a low by year. And as part of that, focusing on finishing projects and using up what I already have in my stash. If you have watched that video, you will know that I have given myself permission to buy fabrics or yarns for projects that have been on my to sew list for a very long time, at least a year. And then I asked myself, maybe those projects actually can wait. Because if I have survived this long without having these garments in my wardrobe, can I not wait a bit longer? I noticed I really did not like the idea of not being able to buy fabrics or yarns for these projects. But what will happen if I do not buy any of these things in six months, a year? Like really what would happen? It was really confrontational for me. I really wanted to make excuses for myself to be allowed to buy these materials. But then I was asking myself like, hang on, I have already like 
21 garments to upcycle at least, three plastic tubs of yarns that I love, a mountain of mending, several works in progress and UFOs, and some fabrics I have yet to touch and loads of fabric scraps. I have plenty that probably can keep me busy for at least a year if not longer so why do i stress about fabrics i potentially will buy i might not even find anything that is suitable for these projects why do i feel like i want to give myself that loophole to be honest with you i really don't know but i do think that it's a good sign that i do need to do a low buy and i do also really want to sew and knit more and also update my style and my clothes so therefore these two projects align really well together so during my low buy i will not be allowed to buy new fabrics and yarns for new projects. I will be allowed to buy supplies that allow me to finish a project. I know, for example, for one project that I do need to buy lining and interfacing, but I also will be mindful about buying these things. If I buy additional supplies, it will be because I'm currently working on that project, not because one day, maybe I will. I put this rule in place because at the core of doing this project it is that i want to make more rather than spending my time buying things i think i forgot to mention that i'm planning to have this challenge from march 2024 until march 2025 and then i will evaluate initially i thought i was going to do this challenge for six months but then i was thinking that is way too short amount of time i think a year will push me a little bit more and it will also give me more time to actually make a real dent in my stash. So here are some other reasons why I want to do this challenge. Space limitations. I do not really have a lot of more space to store fabrics and yarns and going for my stash really reminded me of that. I'm at my max right now. I also really want to finish all my work in progresses and my UFOs. In my recent stash clean, I also cleared out all the UFOs that I did not remember ever working on or that did no longer inspire me. So everything in my work in progress and UFO pile are things I generally want to do. I have lots of ideas. All the time I get new ideas for projects. It's always something new that excites me. I have never had problems with coming up with ideas on what to do, what to design, what to make. Therefore, it can be really easy to accumulate a lot of things for these ideas if I allow myself. And I'm also really good at starting projects but less good at finishing them. And I really hope by doing this challenge that I will become better at finishing projects. I also really want to make my stash exciting again. I have several ideas on how you maybe can do so. And that is something I want to explore and share with you throughout the next year. I also think using your scraps and using up your stash can make sewing seem more accessible to more people because I think if all you see in the sewing community are people making new clothes from new fabrics every week, as sewing can seem like very expensive and very inaccessible if you do not have that disposable income. My word for 2024 is embracing creativity. And I think me working within the limitations of using what I already have, I will really push myself creatively. One thing I talked about in my creative goals for 2024 was to be more creative with my scraps. I got really inspired to take my scrap busting game to the next level after I finished making these silk shorts last year. The silk shorts were made in this Korean patchwork technique known as Puyagi. And then I dyed these shorts blue and they turned out so beautifully. And it really inspired me to look at my scraps newly. And I'm even making a denim patchwork boiler suit right now 
all that after me saying that I do not have any suitable fabrics for a jumpsuit or an overall. Starting that project showed me that maybe my stash has way more possibilities than I initially thought. So the current plan is to do this project until March 2025. And then we will see how much can I make in a year using what I already have. So let me know in a comment down below if you're also working on busting your stash. And until next time, bye!